October 18th, 1870, four months later, one mile south of Golden in an abandoned mine owned by William Loveland. There was a lot of mines out here just south of Golden up by the old clay pits and that area up in there that were owned by Loveland and Nichols and all those guys. One of them was owned by Loveland, was abandoned. Fifteen feet down and over a little bit into another pit, some of Loveland's employees found another man's body laying at the bottom of this pit. Now, just like 1868, this guy was positioned there. Rocks, sticks, and dirt were covering him up. Call the sheriff. This guy was covered with lime. Now, lime will, is a chemical that will uh, disintegrate, dissolve anything. So somebody was trying to cover this up, this one particular up. So the sheriff goes out to the Loveland mine. They pull this guy up out of the mine. They take him down. Anderson looks at him. Anderson said, this is a murder. The lime didn't do his, his job because this guy's got a bullet hole in the back of his head. So now we got five, okay? <clears throat> we get about nine months. July 16, 1871. Another body is found underneath a pile of rocks in a gully one mile south of Golden up there by the Loveland Mine. Another one. This is the sixth one. Some passers-by find this guy because that particular road, and I don't, remember, I don't know what the name of it is, but I, I remember the old name of the old road. I don't know if they've renamed it or not. It used to be called Trip Road. It was going to do a Trip's Ranch out there on the west side. Now they call it Dead Man's Gulch. I'm going to tell you why they call it today, Dead Man's Gulch. Because two picnickers were up there, found a pile of rocks and a human hand sticking up out of the rocks. So they call the sheriff, and the sheriff gets up there and sees this. They pull the rocks off and all the dirt, and there's another guy there, and this guy's wearing an army soldier's overcoat from the same Mormon battalions that fought in, in Salt Lake City. He's wearing this coat. They take him back to town. Anderson says, you got another one, a bullet hole in the back of the head. Now, by now, this time, now, the people up in Golden are beginning to get a little unnerved, like a lot unnerved. They're the ones that title is Dead Man's Gulch, and there's no more picnics up there. Now I always want, they built a subdivision up there now, but people knew the history behind <laughs> Dead Man's Gulch. Maybe they would have moved elsewhere. I don't, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe they did or didn't. <clears throat> About that time, the news is getting out. The news media now know that we've only got the Denver, the Denver, well, actually the Rocky Mountain News is what we got, and we've got the Colorado Transcript. Transcript is keeping it pretty hush. George West, my, my evaluation later, did not realize the panic situation that could occur here. If the citizens of Golden, we don't have that many, 2,300, knew that they've got six victims like this, one thing, the human element is that people can, can deal with fire, flood, pestilence, because they understand that. But what you can't understand is the violent tendencies of a fellow human being. How can people do this? And on top of that, who is it? If I don't know who it is, is it my neighbor? Is it somebody that I know? And then if I leave my house to go to church or go to school or go to work, am I going to be the next person at the bottom of a well? And so this starts to build in these citizens in Golden, that whole light, that panic starts to build. The news media picks it up. <clears throat> sheriff Dave Cook, who's now the sheriff of Arapahoe County, <clears throat> rides out to Golden. He has a meeting with Ward. <clears throat> and says, I don't know if you know about this, but in July of 1870, I had a second one. Dry well in Highlands, which is North Denver now. There was a well. I found the bottom of that well. Gunshot to the head, covered with rocks and dirt, wearing a soldier's overcoat. Well, if you count that, now we've got seven, now we've got eight if we count the two from Arapahoe County. So we got a guy actually moving from Arapahoe County into Jefferson County, going from the Golden Area just to the South Golden Area. We got eight. We got eight. May 18, 1872. <clears throat> Let's see what I got in here. Yeah. May 18, 1872. Guy Gultz, right across from where they found the guy, the railroad engineer found, him, found the guy, right across the road in Guy Gulch, just up the hill from the roadbed in Clear Creek Canyon, 
they find another victim under a pile of rocks. He's 40 feet from where the January 1870 victim was found, only 40 feet, same, same everything. And he's been garroted and shot in the head. Now, that's, we're getting to a point, this is no longer acceptable <laughs> by anybody. Uh, not only not acceptable by the sheriff or the citizens of Golden, but by the media. This is, they've never experienced anything like this, but the Rocky Mountain News picks it up. They say in their paper, now the barbs are starting to fly. This is not a flood, this is not a fire. We elected you, Sheriff, to protect us. Obviously, you're falling short here. So what are you gonna do about it, Sheriff? So now, in my experience, and if I put myself in Ward's shoes 140 years ago, I can picture the anxiety of this town, the fear that's now going through the town. Who is the, we can't fight this person. We can't deal with it, you, that's your job. Ward doesn't have a clue what to do, but you can ex imagine his frustration, his personal, professional frustration. And on top of that, this guy is really getting frustrated because he has a little bit of experience. He should be able to find this. We don't have that many people here, and it's still happening, so who's doing it? Rocky Mountain News writes, oh, by the way, in Golden, there's a, been a half a dozen murders and they could have been, they were committed in sight of such a little community like Golden without any trace of the murderer being left behind? Criticizing the sheriff. Now the pressure, the political pressure is starting to build. The paper says the work, probably for the purpose of robbery, that Golden's police officers, in this case the sheriff, owe it to the public to ferret them out. Well, how do you ferret them out? How do you do that? Where do you even start is the question. <clears throat> Attach at this point, remember that degeneration theory I told you about. Those who drank and forced themselves on others led directly to a life of crime was the theory. Self-abuse, poor hygiene, weak physical stature poor moral standards. Crime was caused by the inaction or incompetence of the law. It was now the prevailing theory. May, 18, May 22, 1872. The Sheriff's Department and Jail was located at today, 1206 Washington Avenue, which was on the second floor I always looked at it as on top of Plumber's Jewelry. I think there's a jewelry store there now, I think. <laughs> but downstairs is Plumber's Jewelry. In 1872, upstairs was the jail. So you had the inmates in there, and that's if you went to report something to the sheriff, you went to there. That's where you went. On May 22, 1872, Ward and Hoyt are standing out there in front of the jail. We don't know what their conversation is, but you can picture the tenseness. People in Golden have had enough. We've had too many of this. You've got to stop it. This constant pressure and grinding and politics and the newspaper now hounding them has now caused inexperienced police officers to overreact. There's a guy named A.B. Lacour, a Frenchman who lived in Golden. Nothing wrong with him, they thought. He was, quote, miserable looking. And... Hoyt said, he's a Lambrosian cuss. He's a degenerate. Is he? Well, who made you a psychiatrist to figure that out? He's not dressed well. He's a town drunk is what he is, okay? Well, when Ward and Hoyt are standing in front of the jail and the sheriff's department, dozens of golden citizens see them. They're, they're upset. And they form this circle around the sheriff and the undersheriff and say, what are you going to do about it? We're going to vote you out. We're going to kick you out of office. We need, we need something to happen. We need something. You can picture this, this, this fear, this anxiety that's going on with the, city, the citizens of Golden. Now Ward and Hoyt are at wit's end. They don't know what to do. 
But you know, if they haven't caught the guy, it's probably going to happen again. They're still, they have the same fears that the citizens have. Well, here comes Mr. Lacklear, unbeknownst to him, walking down Washington. Hoyt spots him. Hoyt goes over and grabs him, drags him over the middle of this little crowd of golden citizens. And what does he think? I've got the degenerate. I've got your killer. I've got him. So, as George West, who witnessed this, wrote later, he said, uh, Hoyt grabbed Lacklear by the scruff of the neck. Can you picture? Because Hoyt was a big guy. Hoyt then placed his pistol to Lacklear's head and discharged it into his brain. Picture that. He shot him. Dropped his body in the middle of Washington. And the citizen said, oh, great. It's going to stop now. It was okay. Well, yeah. And Hoyt says, I think I did it. I think I killed the bad guy. He's a degenerate. He's, I learned that, right? It's got to be him. Well, poor Lackler wasn't the guy. Picture that. Twelve. What was he doing wrong? They asked him. Well, he was peddling without a license. That was my reason to shoot him. What did the paper say? What did George West say? Hoyt's action was the best alternative the law had at the time to stop the killing. If you ratcheted ahead 150, 140 years to today, and they had some inmate in the jail, and the sheriff just took him out and shot him in the head in front of the jail, what would you think would happen? But, okay, it, everything's, everything's right. Well, eight days later, May 30th, the next victim. On the bank of Clear Creek, seven miles west of Golden, they found him buried under the rocks. Brand new death, freshly shot in the back of the head. It wasn't Mr. Lacklear that did it. Your sealer killer is still loose. <clears throat> July 24th, 1872, is their first break. Now we're about nine victims now. January, July 24th, 1872, the mouth of Coal Creek Canyon. Now he's kind of gone down, and now he's moving a little bit further north. They find this guy piled on a bunch of rocks and tw twigs, shot in the back of the head, and he's garroted as well, just like every one, the rest of them. The sheriff now knows him to be a guy named William Smith. He's a 23-year-old soldier, just a 23-year-old. And he knows this 23-year-old is living with another guy up Cold Creek Canyon. Well, go find, go, let's go interview his buddy, the guy he's living with. Well, they do. Their first break. The partner, believe it or not, admits to Ward giving this guy a gun to protect himself. Well, even Ward figured out, wait a minute, um, the guy... The guy was shot in the chest, and then he was hanged. How do, you get, how do you do that to yourself? Somebody else did it. This guy's lying. The problem with our history is that Ward never documented the conversation with this other guy, like we would date do today. Didn't do it. We don't know who this guy is. But Ward says, um, I want you to report to me tomorrow at, at the sheriff's, my office in Golden. We, want, we, need, we need to chat a little bit here. Okay. <laughs> well, obviously the guy didn't show up. He took off. <clears throat> Testimony this guy gave Ward that Ward did say was that Smith, the dead guy, sat down on a rock and shot himself. Then he pulled out a straight razor and cut his own throat. <laughs> well, you can't do that. <laughs> so the guy quickly left town. Unbeknownst to Ward now, he thinks he's got a suspect. Maybe he does. December 14th, 1872, the next victim. This happens to be in Clear Creek County, not in Jefferson anymore. But the publicity has gotten out so far that all the now the sheriffs are aware, I hope this guy doesn't show up in my county, and he did in Clear Creek County. <clears throat> 